Welcome to Better View. In this video, I am going to talk about eggs. So first, let us start with the anatomy of an egg. So as you can see here in this diagram, the egg that we all know of is composed of many different parts. Okay, so from inside to outside, they are yolk, albumin, and shell, which itself is divided into three layers: the shell membranes, the testa, and the cuticle. The first part that we are going to talk about is yolk. Yolk forms about 31% of the total egg and is present in the form of eight to nine concentric rings. Okay, these concentric rings are formed from dark and light yolk. So in this diagram, you can see that we have light yolk and dark yolk. Okay, light yolk represented by light color, dark yolk represented by the darker color. And these two types of yolks form the whole egg yolk, okay, which is about 31% of the total egg. Then at the top of the yolk, a neck-like structure called latibra is present that holds the germinal disc. Okay, so this orange-colored part is called the latibra, and this circular thing is called the germinal disc. And this germinal disc forms the difference between the fertilized and unfertilized egg. Okay, so in fertile eggs, it is called the blastoderm, and in an unfertilized egg, it is called a blastodisc. So what it uh, the germinal disc is? It is the ova. Okay, so after ovulation, the ova will be present on top of the yolk. Okay, it is holded by the latibra. Then, as it continues uh, through the path of the fallopian tube, it will form the embryo. Provided that a sperm is present and fertilization takes place. Okay, so if fertilization is there, the germinal disc, which has the ova, will form the zygote. Then the zygote will transform into an embryo. Okay, so germinal disc having an embryo is called the blastoderm, while a germinal disc which is having a dead ova is called blastodisc. Why dead ova? Because uh, we'll come to that in albumin actually. That there's a region of fallopian tube that is called the chalaziferous region okay chalaziferous region is part of infundibulum and it will secrete a thick layer a uh, thick albumin okay a very uh, delicate layer of thick albumin that is called the chalaziferous layer okay and this will coat the yolk and the germinal disc so after this uh, coat is there the uh, sperm cannot fertilize the egg okay so we have a very short duration of time in which fertilization can take place okay and if it is not there if the sperm was not there or if the sperm was there but it was not able to fertilize the egg in time then the ova will die okay because it has no purpose now and that is why such eggs such a infertile eggs are considered dead or non living or sometimes some people also refer to them as vegetarian eggs okay so it is Blastodisc in infertile, uh, infertile egg and blastoderm in fertile egg. Then the major uh, part of the egg is albumin. Okay, it forms about 58% of the total egg. Right here, 58% of the total egg. It is the white part. And make sure that your spelling is correct. It is albumin, not albumin. Albumin is a blood protein. Albumin is the egg white. Okay, it is classified as thick or thin albumin on the basis of ovomucin. Okay, so in thick albumin, ovomucin is present, and in thick albumin, ovomucin is absent. Okay, so the thick and thin are referring to their densities, not their thickness. Remember that. Then there are four layers of albumin. The innermost is chalaziferous layer, or we can also call it inner thick albumin, which forms three percent of the total albumin. Okay. Chalaziferous form 3% of the total albumin, and you can see it here. This thing is the thick albumin. Okay, it is covering the yolk, forming the chalaziferous layer. And after the formation of chalaziferous layer, fertilization cannot take place. Okay, and this is uh, released from the chalaziferous region of the infundibulum, that itself is a part of the fallopian tube. Okay, then. We have the thin albumin. This whole thing is the thin albumin. Okay.
ओके वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन थिक एंड थिन एल्बुम प्रेजेंस और एबसेंस ऑफ ओवर म्यूसिन ओके देन अगेन वी विल हैव थिक एल्बुम and then we'll have a thin album okay so there are such layers okay in a thick albumin then in a thin albumin then outer thick albumin then outer thin albumin okay remember the percentages so in a thin albumin 70 17.5% of the total albumin outer thick albumin 55% outer thin albumin 21% okay then we have the shell membrane shell membrane itself has two parts the inner membrane and the outer shell membrane okay and these two membranes are very closely adhered to each other except at the broad end which are separated to form the air space okay and together uh, the inner and outer shell membrane they are of 0.01 to 0.02 mm thickness okay now what is air cell so air cell is just a cavity between the two uh, layers of the shell membrane inner and outer which is formed after laying okay so after oviposition what will happen there's difference in temperature between the hen the mother and the environment and because of that uh, the albumin and the other parts of the egg the liquid parts they will shrink okay and what will happen the air will be sucked in and this will form the air cell and what is the function of air cell it will provide oxygen during incubation to the developing embryo okay the normal depth of air cell is 4 to 8 mm then testa commonly called the egg shell okay in reality the egg shell has three parts shell membrane testa and cuticle but in layman terms we call uh, testa as the shell mem uh, shell egg shell so what is testa it is an outer hard protective covering constituting 11% of the total egg weight okay it has two part components organic and inorganic in organic component obviously it will have calcium the organic components uh, component has two part outer spongy layer and inner mammillary layer that has conical knobs embedded in the outer shell membrane okay so the mammillary layer will have knobs that are embedded in the outer shell membrane that is why when you break the egg the outer shell membrane and the testa they are very closely adhered to each other and you cannot easily separate them then at last we will have cuticle cuticle is not present in eggs of all birds okay it is present in some species and absent in some species in case of chicken it is present it is a thick transparent chalky layer that covers the testa it is water repellent and bacteriostatic it is water repellent and bacteriostatic these are the functions of cuticle it prevents bacteria to enter into the egg or also thrive on the egg and it is also water repellent so this is it for the anatomy of the egg these are all the important points that you should know then we said that i'll talk about fertilized versus unfertilized egg okay so what will happen when ovulation occurs the ova will be released into the oviduct or fallopian tube then in the infundibulum region fertilization will take place if mating was there okay so if uh, the female animal and the male bird or the female bird and the male bird they were housed together they will mate and the sperm will enter into the oviduct and reach the ova and fertilize it to form a zygote okay in this case the embryo will develop and this egg is called fertilized egg okay and such type of eggs are used in hatchery for hatching okay there's another type of egg which is called the infertile egg and what will happen in the infertile egg fertilize fertilization will not occur okay and when we are producing such eggs we don't house the male and female together okay because we don't want to have a chance of getting an fertilized egg and why we don't want that because such infertile eggs are for table purposes okay and commonly they are also known as the vegetarian eggs now they are not really vegetarian because the term vegetarian refers to uh, vegetables or plant products okay so even milk is not properly vegetarian but if we are talking about if it is a live animal then no it is not a uh, live animal infertile eggs are dead and the ova itself forms a very negligible amount of 
uh, substance in the egg. Okay, so you can see all these percentages and you can see that the germinal disc forms negligible amount. Okay, so you cannot say that the egg is living or it was living. No, it is dead because it is unfertilized. If it was fertilized, then it would have been a living being. But without fertilization, it is not a living being. And you should know that the egg, uh, the proper ova, is very negligible in amount as compared to the entire egg. So some people believe that the entire egg is a complete cell, a complete living being. No, only the ova is living part. Okay. So yes, you can consume unfertilized eggs. They are not living, but it is up to your religious beliefs, your cultural beliefs and your own personal beliefs. Okay. But for those who want to consume eggs or for those people who want to know what is the benefit of consuming eggs so for them we'll talk about the nutritional value of eggs okay so egg size means the weight of egg in case of chicken it is 55 grams this is the most important value because chicken eggs are the most consumed eggs other than chicken some other uh, eggs that are consumed are quail eggs 10 gram duck eggs 70 to 80 gram and turkey eggs 85 gram okay now for per 100 grams of the egg without shell okay i'm not uh, calculating the shell i'm just saying remove the shell take out the yolk and albumin okay and have 100 gram yolk and albumin so what will be the nutritional value in that so calories 155 kilocalorie okay so in one chicken egg that is weighing 55 gram it will have about 70 to 90 kilocal energy okay then protein per 100 gram of egg is 13 gram and fat is 11 grams okay so for one egg we can say the protein is 7 grams of protein and 5 grams of fat the water content of an egg is 74 gram or 74 percent then total carbohydrates present per 100 grams of egg is only one gram so you can see that eggs are not capable of producing heat in your body okay so they are very much summer friendly some people believe that eggs should not be consumed in summer because they are heat producing no that is not the case at all the carbohydrate percent in fat is very very low it is one percent okay so if you believe that eggs will make you fat no they won't because they don't have enough calories and they also don't have enough carbohydrates okay the cholesterol person uh, the cholesterol per 100 gram of egg is 273 to 373 milligram uh, the variation is due to various text in some textbook I found 275 to 300. In some textbook I found 370. So I've written this value 275 to 373 milligram. Now it is a very big number, and some people might be afraid to eat eggs because of this. But know that the cholesterol in egg will not relate to the blood cholesterol level in you. Why? Because blood cholesterol level is not so much dependent on the cholesterol level of your diet, but rather the amount of saturated fat. In the diet okay so what is the amount of saturated fat in eggs it is three gram per hundred gram okay so it is very minuscule so if you think that your blood cholesterol will rise uh, it will but it is not a very significant change okay so if you are holding yourself back from consuming eggs because of this cholesterol level then there's no need to but if you are still confused, definitely you can talk to your nutritionist or your primary healthcare provider. Okay. The final thing is that the biological value of egg protein is 96. Okay. Which is highest among common food that we eat. The biological value of milk protein is 94. Okay. So milk protein and egg protein, they are the best sources of protein. Why? What is the biological value? It means that the egg protein is utilized by the body completely. Okay. In case of certain plant proteins or even in some animal proteins you will not uh, use all that protein that you are eating okay so some protein is lost because it is undigested some protein is not absorbed so the end percentage of the protein that you consume that is being utilized by your body that we calculate by biological value and we say that egg protein is nine uh, the high having the highest biological value that is why it is called the gold standard of protein okay so we compare other sources of proteins with an egg okay so egg protein is the gold standard of proteins 
So these are uh, all the new important nutritional values of egg. Of course, egg is also a rich source of certain vitamins, minerals. One thing I forgot to talk about in yolk that the color of yolk is due to presence of yellow pigments, mainly carotene and xanthophyll. Okay, and you know carotene is the precursor of vitamin A. So this is it for my video on eggs. If you found this video useful, found it interesting, then please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.